Hey, what's up, Husker Nation? My name is Logan Merrick, and this is Husker Central. This channel is completely dedicated to fellow Husker fans like myself who just love the Huskers and want to take a deep dive into what's going on. In this video, we're going to be unpacking the dream duo, that is Kyle McCord and Julian Fleming. Now, I've done videos on both of those guys, but in a spread of like talking about other receivers and then talking about other quarterbacks. But they're really starting to trend towards Nebraska, so we're going to deep dive into both of them in this video coming up right now. All right, so let's look at first and foremost Kyle McCord because we all know if you've been a Husker fan for any time, the quarterback play was really what kept this team from getting to a bowl. With all the turnovers, with just the inability to really pass, um, it, it, it suffered greatly. And so we have to go and get not just a quarterback, but a, a competent quarterback, but specifically, I think a true leader. Now, all in my comments have been, well, why would we go get Kyle McCord? Why would Kyle McCord even want to come to Nebraska? Uh, Kyle McCord is not a running quarterback. He's not a mobile quarterback, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'm going to answer all of those things right now in regards to Kyle McCord. Let's take a look at some of his film. Now, let's get it rolling. So let's just watch him. Watch him spin it right here to Julian Fleming. Right there between three defenders, and there's a good presentation of what Julian Fleming can do for you. Big, strong, throws that seam route so well to tight ends, which, man, as a Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski fan, I'd love to see that in Nebraska. But look at him here. He maneuvers well. He's not fleet of foot, but he maneuvers the pocket well, gets outside, delivers the ball. That pass right there is a hard pass to make, FYI. Big, strong arm right there to Marvin Harrison uh, for a big score. And so the question, you know, everybody's talking about the O-line. Everyone loves to go in the comments and destroy the O-line in, in, on this channel. And I'm telling you, I keep telling you I'm going to put out the video, and I will. I'm about to go on vacation. And when I get back, that'll be one of the first videos I put out of the O-line is actually not as bad as you think and why a good quarterback actually helps the O-line out tremendously. Look at him step up here, and that is a stinking rope. That is a rope on point. And so I so there's a there's a couple of things here. One, he can flat spin it. He can put the ball. What he is known for, Kyle McCord, is for his accuracy. And you can see right there, he only got to play one year as a starter. So that was this year. And he went 11 and 1. And the dude is known for his accuracy, which is what is desperately needed. Now, everybody's like, well, that's not what this offense is about. This offense isn't, isn't about um, uh, we have to have a quarterback that's a dual threat quarterback, blah, 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 blah. If a coach is worth their salt, any coach, and I'm not just talking about Matt Rule, I'm not talking about Marcus Satterfield, I'm talking about any coach, you coach and you formulate your game plan around your players. So if you have a quarterback that is a big framed quarterback known for his accuracy and his big arm, then what do you do? You formulate your game plan to fit around that quarterback. Now, have we did what we see this past year show that they had to have a dual threat quarterback? Well, yeah, because they can't throw, so they did mostly just running the ball. And that doesn't mean that Kyle McCord, if you go and look at his his PFF stats, he doesn't have the inability. He's not a statue. I mean, you just saw in some of those clips right there, he's not a statue. He can move around. It's just he is not a guy that's a burner. He's not going to hurt you with his legs. But he can maneuver the pocket really, really, really well. Now, Kyle McCord is number eight uh, in on th for on three in the transfer portal as a quarterback, number nine in 24-7 sports. He was a five-star coming out of high school. Um, big guy, threw four. Six, uh, he had a 65.8 completion percentage, 264 yards per game, totaling to about 3,170 yards total of offense, 24 touchdowns, six interceptions. I will take that all day long, considering that two of those interceptions came in one game against Michigan at the end of the year. So he he he's good. Now, what about the whole dual threat? The, da, 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 da. Why would he come here? Well, there's a couple of reasons why he would come here and why I think we should want him as – uh, a fan base. Now, one, like I said, the offensive line gets a bad rap 
for bad quarterback play. Now, what do I mean by that? Quarterbacks who hold the ball too long get sacked. If they don't know how to maneuver out of the pocket, throw the ball away, guess who that looks bad on? Offensive line. Why can you not put that on the offensive line? Because you can't expect them to block for all eternity. Why? Because then that's how holds happen. Also, when you have a quarterback that scrambles a lot, what does that do? Hurts the offensive line. Why? Because they don't stay in the pocket. They move around. What happens? Holdings happen. And so sometimes offensive lines get bad raps when they're actually good and the quarterback hurts them. So what did I see this past year with our quarterback play? I saw quarterbacks get their eyes off of being downfield and in front of them and were running outside the pocket many times or pulling the ball down and running too early instead of just sitting in the pocket. Because many times there was a pocket there, but they got antsy. What does Kyle McCord do? He has good pocket presence and can feel the rush. He knows where he's going with the ball, which is another thing that our quarterback struggled with. If it, was, if it wasn't there on their first read, they pull it down and they'd run. With Kyle McCord, he goes through his progression and he gets the ball off where it needs to go. How else does a quarterback uh, help the offensive line? Getting the ball out quickly. Tom Brady, I'm a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. Everyone dogged on the offensive line. And they said that, that Tom was a statue. And Tom is a statue, by the way. And they'd say, he's going to get killed. What ended up happening? We won a Super Bowl his first year. That offensive line was one of the highest ranked offensive lines in the NFL. Why? Because Tom knows how to read a defense. He knows where he's going with the ball. He knows how to get them the ball. He doesn't hold the ball forever. That's how a good quarterback who has a strong arm and a good completion percentage helps an offensive line, whether good or bad. And I promise you, our offensive line is not as bad as you think it is. It rates very good. And again, I'll have that video coming out here soon. So again, he has incredible accuracy, good pocket presence, big arm, big frame, and dude is a leader. Now, somebody else had said, well, why would he want to come to Nebraska? Well, a couple of reasons. Incredible fan base. One of the best fan bases in the country. Sell out every game. Good NIL. We're not the top, but we still have good NIL. He's going to make good money. He's in the Big Ten, still competing at a high level. I think he sees, I think anyone can see that Matt Rule and these coaches are, are taking this team somewhere. And it's in a good, it's in a good direction, not in a down direction. So why wouldn't he want to come here? You have all of those things and the potential to really turn things around. Now, there's a rumor going around there that he did not want to play against Ohio State. He wanted to go to a winner, blah, 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 blah. Well, on three has him going to Nebraska. They had 100% predicted that he's going to Nebraska. Now, all the uh, Vegas, everything is trending towards Nebraska. I really believe that Nebraska is going to have Kyle McCord as their quarterback. And I think we'll hear about it probably next week. I don't have any intel. I'm not saying I, I, I don't. I just I just have that feeling. I think the way things are trending, it's going to be that way. I also think it's going to be that way with Julian Fleming, who we're about to get to in just a second. And so if you are Kyle McCord, I want you to think about this. If you're a competitor, if it was true that you're like, I don't want to go play against Ohio State, if that was true, and I don't think that it is, but if that's true, you're not truly an athlete. You're not truly a competitor. Because I want to, if it's me, I want to march into Ohio State on their field and I'm going to put on a show. And I'm going to beat you in a team that was 5-7 and seven last year. Who hopefully going into that game is 7-0. and oh. I mean, think about that. Think about how that would make Ohio State fans go, whoa. Shouldn't have got rid of that guy. Because that's the biggest thing. He, won, he lost one game, and Ohio State fans ran him off. Can you imagine? It's been a long time for a Husker fans. Husker fans used to get all over coaches who won nine games. 
Can you imagine being a quarterback who won 11 games and you lo you lose to the number one team in the nation and everybody wants you gone? One man's trash is another man's treasure. And, and we as Husker fans welcome you, Kyle McCord, to come and spin it here in Lincoln, Nebraska and get us to a bowl game, buddy. So the other thing is, well, he's not dual threat, and I already talked about that. Well, here's the other thing. When you have a big arm and you're known for your accuracy, you don't need your legs. You need to be able to, like, yes, get out of get out of sacks or be able to extend plays if you need to, which, again, you see that. He can extend plays. That's just not his strength. And so I'm not necessarily worried about that. And then here's the other one. Here's the last thing before I go to Julian Fleming. Well, but he had Marvin Harrison Jr., and he's got some stud tight ends. And I mean, they, come on. He's, he's not going to have that at Ohio State. You really think he's going to be that good? Yeah, I do. Because when you're that accurate, accuracy tells me skill. He's not throwing up 50-50 balls like Johnny Manziel to Mike Evans. The dude is lacing it in there. Accuracy is skill. Period. Arm strength, skill. Period. Do having good receivers, good offensive lines, good tight ends, good running backs, with all those things heck, help? Heck, yes, they do. Sign me up every day for that. But that doesn't mean that he's still not a former five-star and, and, a, and a portal four-star. The guy has talent. Don't, don't let those things uh, take your eyes off of what he really can do. And at this point, as Nebraska Husker fans, like, as Nebraska fans, we can't be picky about what – I mean, come on, dude. We're talking about a guy who came from, oh, who's coming from Ohio State. There's a lot of expectation at Ohio State, and and it's going to be just as big here. What, what what did we say we wanted in a quarterback? We wanted a guy who's played at a high level. He's been a starter at a high level, and a guy who can withstand the pressure of playing in the fishbowl that is Nebraska. He checks all those boxes. Just my two cents. I think it's going to happen. I really hope it happens. All right, Julian Fleming. Julian Fleming, Ohio State, former Ohio State guy in the portal. Uh, um, Mike Schaefer actually said in uh, Husker 24-7 that he sees things trending with Julian Fleming. Now, I think that, that McCord and Fleming are going to be a combo piece together, and I think that's a good thing. One, Julian Fleming. Uh, Five-star, number one receiver in the nation coming out of high school, was the number four overall recruit coming uh, to Ohio State. And big-bodied guy, six foot two, 210 pounds, um, can run. He's a speedster. Uh, I, I shouldn't say speedster, but he has breakaway speed. How about that? Uh, his NFL uh, comp is, is Jul uh, Julio Jones. Stud, Julio Jones, right? So let's look at some of his some of his stuff as I kind of go through this. So if you watch Julian Fleming, nothing pops off to you, right? Like like that's just a good catch, but that doesn't that doesn't make you go wow. But it's just getting himself in position, boxes out the receiver, gets his feet in, and 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 gets the ball for uh, possession to score a touchdown. Julian Fleming will so upgrade this wide receiver room because of his experience. But what does he do that I really like? If you weren't, if you didn't see the video uh, last night that I put out with Samuel Rowland where we walked, we talked about Julian Fleming. This is what he does. He does the first off right there. He gets, he feels the zone, the openness in the zone, and he sits down. That's pro-level style receiver right there, okay? What is the other thing that he does? He does he goes and gets the grimy catches. Notice all of this stuff is that underneath, up in, right in the middle, kind of that Billy Kemp, but he's a bigger frame than Billy Kemp. Look at that. Shakes a, shakes a defender and just keeps going. He's got a bigger frame than, than Billy Kemp, but he does that same mesh style receiving Feels the softness in the zone. He goes across the middle. Not afraid to get hit. Big guy. 
he reminds me, I said this last night uh, on our video chat, he reminds me a lot of Chris Godwin. He plays all over the field, so he's played in the slot. He plays in that, that wide out position, but they've had him in the slot a lot. The majority of his snaps are on that split out wide, but they've also had him um, in line, and they've also had, have done some end arounds with him. They've done a lot of different things. He also is a, is a threat as a punt returner and a kick returner. He's just a tough dude. Now, he has been hurt. When you look at his stats for 2023, 26 catches for 270 yards, no touchdowns. That doesn't scream to me or to you like, oh, he's he's killing it. Uh, 61.4 PFF grade, which is very average, and he split time. In 2022, his PFF grade was 67.4, which is, which is above average and which is where that's all of these highlights are from 2022. And I did this because I want you to see what he's capable of. And you could be saying, yeah, but Logan, come on, man. Like, that's not killing it. Okay. Well, let's talk about this. Again, not afraid to get those grimy catches. Not afraid of it. But what have I told you? He's played with Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Jackson Smith, Najigba, Marvin Harrison Jr., and tied in after tied in after tied in after tied in. When you think about those things, not to mention other five star receivers that are coming in, it makes you go, well, that makes sense. When you've got studs all over the field that you're having to play with, you don't necessarily get the ball a ton, but when you do, you make something happen, which is what he did in 2022. And then he got hurt and he's had to split time ever since. I think he ups that court, that, that wide receiver room immediately because we saw Jalen Lloyd and Malachi Coleman, they begin to really kind of start coming on at the end of the year. Those young guys just having to grow. But what else does he bring? Well, everything that I'm reading on him from, from Ohio State writers is he's a hard worker. Love that. Fits the Matt Rule stuff. But also something else. He's a great blocker. And how many times do I have to see that wide receiver screen go for no yards or a tackle for loss because tight ends can't get out and block and we got wide receivers that can't block? Man. Give me a receiver that not only is talented with his legs and with his hands, but also can block. I want that guy. That's who Julian Fleming is. So, if you get Kyle McCord, who can spin it, big arm, who already has chemistry with Julian Fleming, overnight, overnight, everyone is better. That running back room is better. That offensive line room is better. That wide receiver room is better. Everyone is better. Now, I can already hear the comments, but we can't do anything with Marcus Satterfield. This is correct. Coaching does have to step up from here. You have all the tools. Now the coaches have to do their job. And they kind of let us down last year because some of those games are on them for the terrible clock management that happened. I want to see a quarterback who can run a no huddle when there's no more timeouts. I want to see a quarterback who can take command and march down the field in two minutes. I want to see a receiver who, when his quarterback is under pressure, comes back to the ball, goes back to his, uh, his quarterback, who knows how to get open, who feels the softness in the zone. I want to see that. So. If you got something out of this video, would you do me a favor? Would you like it? Would you share it with your friends that are Husker fans? If you haven't already, would you please consider subscribing? I am just amazed at how fast this channel is growing because of you guys. And you guys have had such kind words, and I really, really, really appreciate the encouragement. Um, yeah. With that being said, I'll, I will I will not have a video coming out next week because I'll be on vacation with my family. But after that, you can expect a video coming out all on the offensive line. And from there, I'm going to be breaking down every position and how they did this past year. That being said, thank you so much for watching and go big red. We'll see you next time.